All right, so Mel Kerr's gonna go first. Now, starting his turn, he has to activate all threats in the ward room and curse room. So we're basically gonna do this, and this will go into the discard pile. Um, because there's no threats on the board, I don't have to worry about this card yet. I draw a new card for him, and it's basically not activate threats, so we're gonna have a couple turns where nothing's gonna happen. Now, how this basically works, you have a move action, a spell action, and a room action, I guess, where you can like, do stuff. Um, basically, for starting out, I have to start gathering like, these glyphs up here. So we have to get these guys up there as fast as possible. Um, I have to go up in this direction and basically get there. So we'll have Malcor go one, two, three to get up to the R dimension. And he's basically going to try and get to these rooms as fast as possible. Um, now I'll note by, if um, I was like playing like the, like I, I guess you know what, we're actually going to go over the basic rules because of the simple fact that um, you actually have to move really fast in this game. They have to get all the glyphs for like the spells. Um, if this is like, you know, the advanced game, I'd only be able to move like one space here. I could do like a room action and then like, you know, I could like, you know, um, cast a spell. But we'll actually go with the basic rules because I actually have to move up here because you actually have to get these glyphs pretty fast to get the spells like learn really fast. So there's that. So that's basically his turn done. Let's go with Susie next. So basically Susie's got the um, uh, activate fresh card. We're going to basically get rid of that for her. Draw a new card. And it's another activate fret, so nothing's going to happen for another turn, another turn with her around. Um, she's basically going to go over to the laboratory here, I think, to pick up some glyphs. So, we'll move her one here. And she's going to pick up two of these, like, you know, uh, type 3 glyphs for herself. So, one, two. Now, with those glyphs, she can, she can actually cast one spell right here. And I'll probably make her do that next turn. But for now, let's actually um, have Malcor Malcor take his turn. So, um, we're going to activate all the frets in the player. Rift and unsealed room, there's no frets there, so that's done. Another card like this, so that's great. There's gonna be no frets for a while. This happens like in the early game usually a lot because like you know there's no frets in early on stuff for, like the infant invasion, so <clears throat> it's all about how fast those imps get placed. One moment. I've been talking for a while, right? So need my water. Alright, so Melkor's going to continue to move around. Um, I'm going to get him to go here, and he's going to pick up a couple glyphs, so we'll pick up two gl type glyphs for him. Alright, so it's now Susan's turn. She's going to basically use this uh, fret to go right here, because you know it's not going to activate with nothing on the board. Ah, here we go, Imp Invasion. So, when it's basically Susan's turn again, she's going to have to activate Imps, and because there's no Imps, um, I, or, no, in portals, you're going to place an imp portal and that basically start call, causing imp support into the, the academy. So, we're having imp soon. But before we get to that, let's have her cast some spells. She's currently in the laboratory. So, she's got the spells for these right here. So, here's why uh, spellcasting works in this game. Basically, you flip this card, and we, have ha we just cast ourselves philanthropy. Select another player and move all the glyphs in your glyph collection. Uh, and share glyphs into their glyphs collection. So basically, when I cast this, all of her glyphs that she basically um, had went in into um, Malkur's basically, you know, inventory. But because she basically doesn't have any, because you know she used that to cast a spell, Malkur's not getting any glyphs, unfortunately. So that's some sucks, but oh well. Now I know what this spell is, but I have to flip it back over. Uh, Flampery, because basically how this game works, once you basically cast a spell, you have to basically flip it over, and if like the wild magic happens again, or, or wild magic basically happens at, like, uh, at one time point, it'll basically cause all these like level one cards to basically be randomized, so I won't know if it's there next time. So what I have to do right now is basically like, you know, sort of memorize where it is. Um, to do that, I have to go to the library to use this room action, bind spell, and then we'll be able to like, you know, um, have that spell basically locked down. But that won't happen for a little bit, so let's just grab. We're just gonna grab ourselves a, a couple more of these runes for for Susie, and that's gonna be now Curse turn. So he activates these frets to go right there. Up oh, there's wild magic. So wild magic is pretty bad because basically it'll cause like you know the spell has got to be randomized. So with Malcare. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to move him down to the library with two, sp two of his actions. And because I know this is philanthropy, basically here's like uh, how the library works. We're basically going to try and bind a spell. You go to this uh, library and you say bind spell for your action, your room action basically. Now, I know this spell is basically philanthropy, so I say philanthropy. 
poof. And now I basically learned a spell. What this means is that I actually know what this spell is now. But here's the thing. All of these five spells over here, um, I don't know what to do now. And um, basically going to get randomized. And when that happens, um, uh, I'm not going to be able to, like, to, like, you know, um, how can I put this? Uh, this spell might be like, you know, uh, Nova, but after Wild Magic happens, it might be Nova's over here, and this is something else. So, basically, I've got to watch out for Wild Magic, but whatever. We have basically learned a spell plan for you now, and I know where it is. These five uh, spells, I have no idea what they are. Now, if I want to, I can try and guess what these are, but, it's like, you know, I can say, like, maybe this is Nova. And if I do that, if it's Nova, I'll, I basically learn a spell, but if, it, if it's, it's not, these all get randomized again, and then, like, you know, the Mana Crystal loses the mana, but... Uh, we're not going to do that, we're just going to basically leave it as it is. We're going to let Bind a spell and say that's it for his turn. Next turn, I have to worry about Wild Magic for him. But for now, we got an Imp Invasion. So, we have to activate Imps. There's no Imps on the board. Uh, there's less than three portals, so we have to put an uh, Imp Portal around the room. We draw a map card. Poof! Alright, so in the workshop, we just got ourselves an Imp Portal. Right, workshop? Yep, workshop. So, what's happening here is we're going to have like an imp pop out right there, and an imp portal. So, basically there's an imp invasion. An imp is a red land itself in the academy, in the workshop. So, this guy's going to run around basically stealing glyphs. Or he's going to steal um, glyphs from like, you know, uh, wizards. That's the same thing. He can either steal glyphs from like the academy, basically go here and steal the glyphs. Or he can go over to like Susie here and steal his, her glyphs. Or she could he could attack the man crystal, which is bad, but... Um, it's probably unlikely because he needs to have like a friend to help him out. But for now we got Imp, it's going to be a nuisance for us to deal with. Alright, so that's basically done, let's put it over here. Now because I got a, a, a card like this, it's basically saying like, you know, activates in the workshop. Next turn of her, this Imp is going to get activated and that'll basically mean I'll be able to do stuff. So, we're actually going to see that one of these cards actually means something now, which is interesting. But, before that basically happens, I want Susie to, um, let's see here. She's going to go to the laboratory, and or not not go to the laboratory, she's going to be in the laboratory here, and she's just going to grab, I think, um, three more of these, like, you know, types of spells here. So, one, two, three. That'll be her turn. She's going to grab three or five more of those things. End of her turn, I guess, so... Uh, Malkarth is going to go, he's got Wild Magic, so randomize the Unbound spells in the highest level set of spells that have been cast, so we just cast uh, this spell here, it's level 1 spell. All these are going to get randomized. So, we're just going to shuffle them. And we're just going to put them back in the board. So now these spells have been randomized again. And uh, I don't know what they are. didn't know what they were before, but whatever. Let's put that there. Alright, so. He's going to activate Frets in the Horde in the Waking Room. Um, depending on what this guy does, I don't think it'll matter because he's not next to the Horde or Waking Room. The Horde's over here and the Waking Room is right there. Probably don't have to worry about him. But he's still, still a nuisance, basically. Alright, well anyways, we basically like, you know, cast like, you know, a spell of Susie last time. Let's cast a spell with, uh, with Malkir here. Basically he's got like, you know, these like two red ones right here. Let's uh, cast this spell right here. It is Danger. So you teleport to whichever Empire room has the most frets. So whenever this happens, you go to the room with the most frets. In this case, this Imp right here. So he goes right here and says, Hi Imp. And let's we'll basically turn this back around because, you know, that's what happens. Now here's something about this Imp. If he's in a room of a wizard with no glyphs, the, uh, the, the imp won't do anything to the wizard itself, so basically this guy's not going to do anything to, to the wizard. But, um, he's going to still move around when he gets a, okay, a chance to with, like, you know, Susie here. However, I do want to get my, my, like, you know, um, my glyphs, I guess, back, so... Actually, you know what we're going to do? Let's go back to the library here, and I'm going to basically learn this spell. So that was danger. Poof! I now know what danger is. And that means I now have four more spells here to basically, like, you know, um, find out. And, of course, if you, like, um, pierce something out, by the way, I know we've got one more box and three spells. The three spells are Dimensional Rift, um, which basically lets you, like, you know, change the angle of, like, rooms. Nova, which basically lets you cast spells. And, um, here's something good about the rule set being right here, by the way. I can just go in here. Uh, 
Basically, I know that uh, for like level one spells, I've cast Philanthropy and I've cast Danger. That means there's Dimensional Twist, Nova, Dash, and Kleptomania basically left. So if I wanted to like guess these spells, I could, and those would be like, you know, um, the ones remaining. And as like the spells get guessed, I'll have like a higher chance of like being able to guess them if I want to. But I don't think I'll guess this yet. We're just going to, you know, leave it right there and then return again. So, Susie, she's basically got uh, an activate for, with, like, Workshop here. This means that this Imp is going to get activated, as well as the portal again, so... The portal gets activated, we get our Imp. I did the wrong thing there. Alright, so this portal just got activated, and this guy gets activated too. So, we're going to draw a location card. Now, how do these, like, numbers work in this game? It basically tells you, like, the angles for these guys that, that they move. So, this Imp's going to move in the, uh, the west direction right now. Which means he's going to walk into this, um, gar this, this chamber of a guardian. Now, if an imp walks into a chamber of a guardian, he's not going to have a very good time. So, let's just see here. Guardians are animated statues seeking to protect wizards of the academy. They are not considered to be threats. If an imp enters a room with a guardian, the imp is killed. Remove it from play. So, these guardians are both, like, you know, beneficial and detrimental to me, because they just kill the imp for me, which is nice. Pop. Done. Good job there, guardian. You killed me an imp. Good job. Alright, so that's basically um, what happens with this workshop card. So, let's put that right there, and we'll draw a new uh, disaster card for her. Now, no point, I just got, you know, um, this, like, finished off here. Basically, this disaster deck... Um, you know, it, 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 it'll basically get, like, you know, reshuffled by with the progression de deck next turn. And I'll see what that's all about. Uh, actually, Fretz for Master Study and Curse Room, so nothing's going to happen with her. Nothing's going to happen with him. Awesome. Basically, we're going to have a couple more turns and nothing really happening, which is nice. Alright, so, um, she's basically got all these, like, lovely little glyphs here, but she can't actually cast anything with them because uh, all she can really cast is Philanthropy. Um, that is sort of useful in that I can move, like, you know, all my glyphs to, uh, to, like, you know, Malkar here. So I might actually do that. Let's actually, like, you know, one, two, three. We're just going to keep gathering glyphs for her, and when I get the chance, I'll do Flamfree and basically send all these glyphs over to Malkar. That's what we're going to do with, with her. Basically, these boxes, you can still cast them, and, you know, even though they're bad, sometimes they can be good for you. The level 1 boxes are actually pretty good because, like, you know, you've only got Danger here, which is really, really bad. The other two are, like, you know, sometimes n n like useful if, like, you know how to use them. Ooh, nice. Um, apparently, they can gain a copy of one of the gift of glyphs. So, again, you can make extra glyphs if, if you uh, have, like, you know, um, this uh, school of uh, magic, apparently. What's the school basically called? It is. Enchantment. So if you have enchantment, enchantment school of magic, you actually get, like, get more of like philanthropy apparently here. Good to know. All right, so that's her turn. Um, nothing's gonna happen with these. Now I basically draw eight cards for like you know disasters here. We got no, no card to draw for Malkir here. When that happens, basically go over here. You flip these around, and we're basically gonna take two cards out of the progression deck to add to this one. So basically how this works is these progression decks will make the uh, the game harder. It's like you know you keep drawing them. So. We have to shuffle these now, and he's going to draw himself a much higher card, possibly. So, he's just going to activate fret, but basically there's going to be a couple higher cards in here. It could be a fire card, an imp invasion, could be, like, you know, something else. We'll have to be careful of it, basically. Alright, so this guy's got to go cast some more spells. Let's get him to go over here for his turn, that'll be it. And now it's basically Susie's turn. She's got, you know, uh, nothing card, so this is probably over here. Into a discard pile. She draws a card. And she's going to activate all threats in the player rift and unstable room. So, again, nothing is going to happen for her, but that's fine. Now, because we basically collected all these lovely, like, you know, glyphs, we're actually going to collect two more. And then we're going to cast Flanfrey by, like, you know, spending through these glyphs and giving all these glyphs over to, um, Malkar. So Malkar's now got all these lovely glyphs for himself to use. He's got basically. Eight level three glyphs basically to cast for himself, which is nice. Alright, so um, that's basically her turn done. Let's go back to Melkar. He's basically got um, Holy Room, Library, and Lost Room. Basically, if threats happen, that's fine. 
Let's just have um, him get a new card. Laboratory Man Crystal in our dimension. Don't think there's any frets there, so we're fine in that, I think. Alright, so basically he's got to get some, um, you know, a glyph to cast some spells. Let's grab uh, Type 1 Glyph here for himself. And here's something else about him. Um, because I got all these lovely glyphs for him to use, let's actually see what these, like, Glyph 1 and, like, you know, these Glyph 3 actually match out to basically do for him. So, um, I shall do that next turn. Put that right here for now. He's going to grab three of the level 1 glyphs and I'll be it for his turn. Done for him. Alright, so, uh, you do nothing because you don't have any, um, you know, frets in those areas. I put that in the wrong place, apparently. Alright, so, we got another imp vision coming along, so we're going to have more imps to deal with. But that'll be in a couple turns. For now, um, let's have her, Susie, go up somewhere else, I guess. Um, let's have her head up to the library, I guess, for now. And that'll be her turn. Malchor's turn basically does nothing as well, so let's put that right there. Alright, here's Gathering. So, when this uh, card is facing play, draw two random rooms, select one, and move all wizards to that room. So basically, it's going to cause all our wizards to gather in one single room. Which is, you know, not that great if, like, it's a bad room, but it could be good when I get, get my guys together for some reason, I guess. Alright, so, Malchor's over here. He's basically got some, you know, lovely, uh, you know, um, glyphs, I guess. Let's have, we're gonna go over to, uh, you know, this room right here, because bridges are connected by a doorway here. And we'll get ourselves a couple more, more um, you know, glyphs for him. Do type 2 glyphs. And that'll be his turn. Alright, so we gotta get ourselves an imp uh, invasion going again, so... Uh, now here's how it basically works, the imp invasion. You activate all imps, so... This imp's gonna get activated first, so we have to basically, like, you know... Draw a room card for him. And he's going to go toward the cursed room. So basically, the cursed room. Direction towards the cursed room. This imp is going to make his way toward, towards wherever the cursed room is. And the cursed room is right up here. So basically how this works. Um, I can basically, um, you know, he's going to basically take the shortest path toward the cursed room. Which is basically, he has to go up in this direction to get to the cursed room. So. He goes one up here. And that's his turn. Alright, next. We have to um, basically put down an imp portal. Because we got this card here, we're just going to use this one to put it, um, uh, well actually, we we'll actually won't do that, I don't think. We'll draw another one for, like, the imp, so, okay, now we are definitely putting on the, um, uh, imp portal in the cursed room, apparently, so, poof. Basically, there's now an, um, an imp portal down here in the cursed room. Bad things are happening in the cursed room, of course. The cursed room. You read this map description? Bad things are likely to happen here. Alright, so, bad things are happening. And we have to draw a couple more imps with this card, I think. Because we have to activate the imp portal, so... And it pops out in the cursed room. And it pops out right here. So we got three imps on the board now, which is kind of bad, but... Luckily, uh, Malkar's got all the, like, you know, glyphs over here by himself, so that's fine. Alright, so that's about the way. Let's put that right here. Draw her a card. The Horde in the Wicked Room, we're going to apparently have stuff happen to him. Uh, the Wicked Room's up here. The Horde is down here. That's fine. That's okay. Alright, so. Uh, let's have uh, Susie move around, I guess, some more. She's going to move... Well, because we're going to gather in a moment, let's just have her move right here to, like, you know, where Malkar is. She's going to grab one of these, like, uh, glyphs for herself. And that'll be her turn. Now they're going to gather somewhere. So we're going to draw two location cards. And they can either gather inside the Awakening Room or the Horde. The Horde is over here, which is probably not the best place for them because, they, you know, um, it's like far, it's disconnected from the Academy. It's, well, it's next to War Room for boxes and AK cast, but um, I don't want to have any boxes to really worry about at this point. So we're probably moving over to the Awakening Room up here because it's like, you know, very close to um, the library. So let's do that. We're going to move both these guys to the Awakening Room. Draw a disaster card for him. We'll see what that uh, basically says in a moment, but they basically move over here, these top two. Uh, where's Susie's icon thing? I didn't actually move her, apparently. 
I'll move the imp instead. All right, so basically moved um, you know them all over here to the waking room. That's fine. Um, basically, what that does is basically um, basically now like you know they're, they're together. Um, I don't think you actually exchange like you know your glyphs to each other, but um, I guess you could if like you want to make like that sort of like a house rule. But anyways, another inf invasion is going to happen soon, so we got a, another card for inf invasion apparently. But whatever. Valkyr's turn. He's in the waking room here. He can basically like you know walk down to the library to like you know. Um, uh, buying some spells he wants, but let's actually use him to cast spells first to find out what to do. He is going to cast a few spells. And you know what? I think what this basically means like the special abilities, you can use like this like, you know, um, enchant for this guy, but you can't use like the special ability for him. So that's how we're going to follow for the rule set for, for these guys, I think, um, for Malkar and Susie. Let's have him cast some spells. He's got lots of blue and like, you know, some other stuff as well, so... Let's have him cast this spell right here, because blue and red. So, blue goes away. And red goes away. And he's, he's going to cast like this one right here, so poof. He cast Dimensional Twist. So basically this will cause you to rotate your room 9 degrees. So, okay, we have to rotate this room 9 degrees. Now here's the bad thing, because I'm basically going to rotate this room, It'll basically cause, like, you know, um, me to, like, lose, like, your flux point or the cursed room is, like, you know, connected to this room. But that's actually not too bad because of the simple fact that, you know, if I rotate this 9 degrees, I can actually make this, like, waking room. Um, another path is to get over to, like, you know, this stuff over here. And because we can't use the room effects, like, for these, it actually makes sense for me to do this. So let's go like this. And that now it's basically rotating 9 degrees like that. So that was one of his actions uh, for Malkar here. Let's make him cast another spell. He's going to cast one level 1 glyph here and one level 3 glyph here. And it's actually going to go back. So that's dimensional twist right there. He's going to cast this spell right here apparently. And this is the other blight. So select another player. Take all of the glyphs from their glyph collection and share glyphs and place them in your glyph collection. So this actually allowed me to steal all of Susie's glyphs. So she actually had one glyph here, and that's not my glyph. Yoink! I'm a thief. And if I had, like, you know, um, the uh, augmentation school, I could gain a copy of my stolen glyph. But whatever, that's basically done. So we stole Susie's glyph because we're, we're an asshole, but whatever. Um, I still have, uh, you know, glyphs to cast other spells as well. So this is basically Kleptomania. This is basically a dimensional twist. I wonder what these spells might be. One of them is Nova and one of them is the other spell. Let's see what this one does. So, Malkor is basically going to cast uh, this spell here. And he's going to cast Dash. Alright, so basically this lets him move for free. Um, basically he can like move free, free like spaces like, you know, um, in one turn. I think that's how it works. Without expending one move, uh, without move, expending a move action. And if you had the augmentation, you can basically, you know, pick up two glyphs, but it doesn't have that, so... Let's make this guy move back over here to, like, the, uh, the glyphs, I guess. So, let's have him move over here. And that'll be his turn. So, this is Nova right here, this is Dash, this is, um, Cutthamania, and then the last one over here is Dimensional Twist. Alright, so, I now know what, no, no, like, all, what all the spells actually do, so that's really cool. Alright, so that's the end of his turn. Um, the Horror and Awakening Room doesn't have actually anything in him, so let's just move us right back here. Now, here's what we're going to do with Susie. Because Susie is like, you know, got no glyphs, we're actually going to move her down here to the library. And she's going to bind some spells. And here's a, you know, I haven't really actually gone over this, but let's just look at the bind spells so you can like see a little bit about it. So, you can take free actions, you can bind a spell. If you're in the library, you may attempt to bind spells. To do this, indicate the unbound spell, face, face down spell, and say its name. Turn face, a spell face up. If you're correct, the spell reigns face up and is considered uh, bound. If you wish, you may immediately attempt to bind another spell as part of the same action. So, basically we're going to bind all these spells. So, Nova. Nova. Dash. 
Dash. Kleptomania. Kleptomania. Uh, the other one. I forgot what it does. Dimensional Twist. So basically I just did that three times. For like one, one single move. You may continue to blind spells until you decide to stop or incorrectly identify a spell. I didn't um, incorrectly identify ammo, so I just kept going. If you incorrectly identify a spell, turn the spell face down and shuffle all unbound spells of that level. Additionally, remove one mana token from the mana crystal. If this was your last mana token, then the players are lost, but we haven't lost yet. Basically, I identify all these spells, even the one I haven't really cast yet, but I knew what it was, so cool. Um, all my level 1 spells have now been uh, basically identified. I only have level 2 spells to worry about. So now basically what I can do, I just have to get myself a bunch of these like, you know, um, tier 1, tier 2 things to get rid of like the, the golems that are guarding these ones. And then we can start like guest casting a little like free, uh, 2 spells right here. So basically she took one action to go here, one action to divine spells. And I could like, you know, continue trying to identify these spells, but that seems foolhardy, so let's just move on. Um, let's have her move right here. Poof. And that's her turn. Alright, so we're going to have another Imp Invasion, so we're going to activate the Imps. And they're all going to move up. Uh, this guy can't move up, so we're not going to worry about him for a moment. You can move up, so he goes up to the Wickham Room. You're going to go up to the Library. Alright, now because I can't move that other one, we have to be, like, go with the second one, so he's going to go with number two here. And he's going to move over to the Enchanted Well. Now that's bad. Because he's actually in the Enchanted Well, this guy, he's actually going to start uh, robbing us of uh, ruins of that type until like, he's dealt with. <clears throat> so, that basically happened. Now I have to basically like, you know, summon our Imp Portal. So, that'll happen. Um, let's do this again. It's going to go to the Flux Point. So we got Imp Portal right here, right there, and right there. And then of course these all summon Imps, so one, two, three. Imp, 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 Imp! Lots of Imps! Now, at the end of his turn, um, Malkar is going to lose any... Okay, never mind. Um, if basically like the, the Imp like had like, you know, the option of basically like, you know, stealing the ruins, he basically steals from all the players, but because he doesn't have it often, he's just gonna like you know not steal any. And I'll see. I'll basically tell you what basically happens after that in a moment. But for now, well, I'm actually gonna happen next turn. That's cool. I like the fact that it's happening now because it means I won't have to worry about it later. So Malcor is basically in this room right here. Uh, he can gather like you know this stuff for danger, but yeah, whatever. This doesn't matter too much. Um, I think Malkor is just going to gather himself a bunch of these, like, you know, glyphs for himself. I actually should move Su Susie over here, but whatever. I'll have to just deal with that next turn, I guess. That'll be basically Malkor's turn. He's basically going to, you know, um, grab a few more of those then. And that'll be his turn. Now it's Susie's turn. Now, here's, a, here's something to note. Because I got so many imps, Enchanted Walls and Flux Point actually have imps in them right at this point, because there's so many imps on the board. Just one right here, and it's right here, and the Imp Portal. So, the Imp Portal's going to get stuff an imp, and these guys are going to actually, like, you know, go elsewhere. So, one, they're going to go uh, to the east, apparently, so he's going to go back. Oh, this guy doesn't actually go back. Um, here's what happens with this guy, by the way. Because he's actually in this room at, like, you know, at the end of Malkor's turn, he would steal from this like type of glyph here, but because like you know, um, here's a, here's the thing. He's, if he's in a room with a glyph, always just lose that glyph of that type. If at least one glyph is lost this way, the imp removes a fire wire token from a space. If no wizard has a glyph of that type, the imp is removed from the board, having stolen everything he can. Basically, this guy's stolen everything he can, so he actually doesn't exist anymore. He's gone. But there's an imp over here, so this guy he can go. East, he can't go east, because that's the wall. He'll go west. He can't go west, because that's another wall. He'll go free. He can't go up that way, there's a wall. So let's go this way. Whee! So that's a hemp in the only room. Annoying, but whatever. 
So that's gonna go over here. Now here's my notebook. If this like deck gets used up, you can basically just you know reshuffle it and like you know use it again. So reshuffle that, and that's done. And it looks like we're at, at the last disaster card again. So we're gonna be adding more you know um, progression cards to there in a moment. But whatever. She's got War Room and Curse Room next time. So Water Room, Curse Room. We're gonna have another imp over here apparently pop out. But well. All right, so that's her, that's her like you know danger card. She has to make her move. Let's have her move. Yeah, she has to move up here to get these cards. So let's get those. She um, she's gonna grab herself one of these tokens for herself, and that'll be her turn. And that's Melkor's turn. He's, he has wild magic. Doesn't do anything because you know wild magic is. Only going to affect cards that are unbound, and I don't have any of those at the moment. Now here's something else, by the way. If this gets like reduced to zero, and I have no cards to take out to refill this, I lose the game. So we're actually getting toward like the like second half of the game at this point. All right, so we have to activate frets in Holy Room, Library, and Lost Room next time. So Holy Room is going to have an imp activated. The uh, library is going to have this guy activated. And the Lost Room, which doesn't exist, is going to have, have good access. So basically these two imps are going to activate in his turn. And when it gets to her turn, the Cursor Room is going to activate. So we're going to have another imp on the board and that guy running around. So bad stuff is happening, but whatever. At this point, I have to start collecting glyphs for, like, you know, this, I guess. So we'll have him jump up here, Malkor, and he's going to grab a bunch of glyphs for himself. So there we go, we just grabbed a couple more ghosts for him. Alright, Susie's turn. She basically activates the uh, frets in the uh, curse room here. So, these guys get in their imp. And we'll draw a location card, see where he goes. He can't go up, so he's going to go to the um, east here, to this guy in the waking room. And that's uh, that guy's move. Oh, here's one. Twist. Select two random rooms and rotate to 180 degrees. So basically we're going to have a couple of rooms go randomized apparently on us. That'll be annoying. Alright, so basically at this point, um, let's have Susie grab a whole bunch more of these, like level 1. Well, I guess not really. I want to do that much. Let's have her grab one of these. And then she'll move down to... Here to grab one one of these, I guess, for his, herself, and that'll be her turn. All right, both of these rooms have imps in them, so ugh. These guys get to move, and they're going to go up. So this guy's going to go up, and this guy's going to go up. Now it's dangerous having that many imps in the same same room because basically, if these guys all made their way down to this way. In a clump like this, they would be, they would damage the mana crystal for sure. Basically, if there's two or more imps in a, in, a, in the mana crystal room, they will cause damage. Which is actually why it's kind of bad to have this right here, but um, not a whole lot you can do about this yet. But whatever, they're basically moved. This goes to the discard pile. Actually, it'll go to disaster deck here, I guess. Oh, okay. I accidentally moved um, the entire deck there. So that's the last card. That's fine. You can have. You can still have twist. And let's give you this one. He's gonna activate first in the horde and waking room. So all three of these guys are gonna get activated when basically it's his turn. That's annoying. But before it happens, let's get him to cast more spells. So he's got all these like you know lovely glyphs basically popping up. Um, let's have Malkor start cleaning house, I think, at this point. Well, maybe not. He'll grab some more glyphs for himself. Let's gather this one. And we'll gather this one. And then he can move down to where Susie is. Alright, so that's basically his turn. 
So, twist is going to happen. Let's select uh, two RAM rooms to basically get randomized. Um, I need a 16 side dice, I think, it for this one, so... Let's go in here, we'll gar grab ourselves... A couple dice. Um... Hmm. There is no D16, apparently, that's a kind of annoying, but oh well. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go with a D20. And we'll basically use like it to basically decide what the, um, two ones go. So, poof! 18 is not room. 12 is, though. So, let's say this is number 12 right here. It's going to rotate 180 degrees. So, rotate this left twice. So, basically, I just flipped around. It didn't really do anything to that one. Because the four, you know. Door of room anyways. Free. Alright, so this is going to get flipped apparently around, so that means that it's going to have um, a store on this side now. So these guys are now disconnected from, you know, this room over here, but they can still go down this way and that way, interestingly enough. Alright, so that basically happened. That's what Twist does. Yeah, this is a very unstable academy, you know? It basically shifts around like crazy. Alright, so, activate frets. Activate all frets in the master study in the cursed room. Uh, well, there won't be any frets in the master study, but the cursed room is going to have guys in it, which is going to be annoying. Alright, so, at this point, let's have, um... Let's have Susan collect one of these, like, you know, tokens for himself, I guess. And I want her to start moving toward like you know some of the, like these like golems and stuff to start wiping them out so we can get more stuff or to wipe out the um, you know stuff like that I guess. So let's have her go down here for two of her actions, and that's her turn. Malcor is going to activate stuff in the horror and awaken room, so all three of these guys are going to get wakened or you know woke, so to speak. Gang will be next apparently. That'll be interesting. Um, Location card says that they're going to go down, apparently, all three of these guys, so one, two, three. All three of them move down to the library. Alright, so Malcor's turn. Um, he's got lots and lots of glyphs basically piling up at this point. Let's have him uh, basically, you know, start using my guess. so what we're going to do with him, he's going to drop down to... I'm really tempted to wipe out these guys right here, to be honest. Because there's so many imps there and kind of nuisance. But let's have him go down to here, and he's going to cast himself Nova. So if you call it, Nova basically requires this spell and this, um, this, this glyph and this glyph to cast, and it'll cause damage to one to every target in your room for one damage. And basically something about these guardians is that basically they're vulnerable to your magic. So if you go to like the thing here, go to like the guardians, Guards have been built to be through their master's magic as such they a target with a damaging spells and killed by a single point of damage. And of course, activate during attacks. The guardians are no threats, they are not never to activate, causing no problems for wizards and will not attack with a mana crystal. So basically this guy is going to just, you know, get destroyed in a moment. We cast uh, this one. And we cast this one. That guy gets destroyed by Nova, so boom. Now, because it destroys Golem, if a nip comes over here, it's going to be, like, you know, capable of stealing from this, like, uh, you know, supply, which is kind of an issue. But, at the same time, it means that I can start grab grabbing the, like, glyphs from here as well, so that's cool. Alright, so, at this point, um, you know what I'm tempted to do at this point? Let's send, uh, let's send Susie on a, a killing spree, I guess, so to speak. She's going to move over here to the workshop. She's going to cast Nova. And she's going to get rid of his imp for us. So that's her turn done. And by the way, the master is saying that Chris will have to deal with that, so we'll do it right now. Uh, 
Um, basically, it's like, you know, the import and this sort of stuff over here. So let's grab ourselves an imp, a location card, and it has to go down because, you know, it can't go up, so... There we go. Basically, that's it for the imp. He's, you know, already done. Alright, so at this point, gathering. Basically, you have to draw two random locations. Alright, so basically, we got the workshop in the holy room. Um, basically, you can choose to either teleport to the workshop or holy room of both Susie and um, uh, Malcor. The workshop is right here. So basically, where Susie is right now. And the holy room is right over here. To be honest, either of these rooms are fine to be, to be in, I guess. But this one's got the imp in it, which is kind of an issue, but... Oh, whatever. Let's just have Malcor jump right over here. And I'll be it for that one. Gathering. Some more stuff to deal with. Alright, so for Malcor here, um, let's have him jump over to... right here to the scrying chamber, I think. He's going to grab himself two of these Type 5 glyphs right away. And that'll be his turn. Alright, so that's Susie's turn. Basically, she's got um, Planet Rift and Unstable Room bit activated. I don't think there's anyone in the Unstable Rift over here. And there's no one over in... The player rift, player rift. Yeah, it's no way in the player rift. We're good on that end, so nothing happens to this one. Now here's something else by the way. The imp invasion will only happen if there's fewer than three threatening imp portals. So if like you know there's already three portals, which there is, we won't have an air portal pop up. We'll just have like you know imps doing their stuff. But we still have to deal with the imps, and there's lots of them anyways. Alright, so, um, let's have Susie, I guess, continue her warp path. She's going to go, um, up here for one turn. She's going to wipe out all three of those imps up there, I think, so those go away. All three of these imps just go bye-bye. Poof. 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 And then for her third action, let's have her just, you know... Meander over here, I guess. 